Welcome to the Ask Amanda Show, where we solve everyday problems for the small business owner. Get nuggets of inspiration, access to experts, and answers to those burning questions preventing you from growth. Here's your host, Amanda Benson Tilch. Welcome to another episode of the Ask Amanda Show. I'm sitting here with my lovely guest and dear friend, Hillary Bratwater. Before we dive into our great episode that we're going to give you um, today, filled with a ton of value on brand and identity, I want to introduce Hillary to you, tell you a little bit about who she is and what qualifies her to be sitting with us here today. So Hillary is the president and creative director, turned a passion for art into an award-winning graphic design firm with the establishment of her company, QM Design Group. Hillary's background includes a Bachelor of Arts from Art Center College Design. During her 10 years as director for Ames Multimedia, the leader in K-12 educational media, Hillary revitalized a classic brand, thoroughly updating the look and feel of the company's marketing collateral. She went on to design for Discovery Education, a division of the Discovery Channel. Considered by her peers as one of the nation's top graphic designers, Hillary's objective is to assist clients in establishing a strong visual voice for their organizations, which you've done for me a couple times, we'll talk about in a minute. Hillary currently is the 2021 chairwoman, sits on the board of directors of the Valley Industrial Association, and is an active member of the American Advertising Federation, as well as Seroptimus of Greater Santa Clarita Valley. Correct. So I know that we have worked together on a few nonprofits, um, we'll, which we'll talk about in a second, but let's, let's share with people how we connected and Absolutely. how we know each other, which was through a networking group, business connections, business connections that um, I've mentioned on the show before that I used to work with um, a local magazine and part of that uh, was networking, which I'm a huge fan of. You've got to network to make, you know, relationships and deals and things happen. And I met you there, Absolutely. which was so fun. I met a lot of great people there. Absolutely. But you, um, you really enlightened my world for a couple reasons because you're so talented. I remember your first pitch that when, when I was there, like we used to do these commercials, go around the room and talk about who we are and wh what our gifts are and our talents and our services. And you brought something that you showed the before and the after. And I was like, it was a logo. Okay. And I was blown away. I was like, ooh, she's, she's got it. She's got the gift. So um, obviously when it came time for me to need you. Need me. <laughs> yeah, you were the first person I went to. Um, but tell, tell us a little bit about your business, actually, and a little bit more about your specialty. Okay. So I do own QM Design Group. We're a graphic design and branding firm in, here in Santa Clarita. Um, my business started, ooh, thir January will be 13 years. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, I used to be a creative director at the Discovery Channel uh, for Discovery Education, um, and I ended up there through an acquisition. Um, Discovery purchased Ames Multimedia for a specific project that I was a creative director on called Digital Curriculum. And they were getting into the digital field at that time and moving all of the educational curriculum to video yeah. and to being online. So I ended up working there for about five years and then they came in and they cleaned house one day and they <laughs> let go of everybody and they closed the LA office. And so I left that day with no job because I all, didn't want to move. stuff in a box. All my stuff in a box. I had to have them, you know, unlock my computer to get my work off of it and um, wow. walked out because I didn't want to move my family to Maryland, which was one of my options. Okay. And went and had lunch with a friend and said, I don't want to go back to work for somebody. I, I think I'm going to try and start my own business. So, you know, in sitting there in discussion, I was like, well, what do I, what do, what do I name my company? Yeah. I don't have a company. And she says, well, who do you work for? And I said, well, I guess I work for my kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> They're my why. And so that's how the name came about. Um, it's Q and M or QM Design Group. Um, Q stands for Quinn. Um, he's my youngest, and Ma M stands for Matthew. He's yeah. my oldest. There's a little bit of rivalry because the younger one got the first letter of the name, but MQ sure. didn't sound very good. Right, I'm sure there is. So 13 years later, we're working. Um, within a day, I had my first client, which was the owners of the company that I had worked for before, Ames Multimedia. Uh -huh. um, and then within a month, Discovery was back as a client this time, not as an employer. An employer, yeah. Because they cleaned house too deep. And they needed and help. They needed help. <laughs> yeah. And you were already familiar with their program. I and, knew and their, their brand yeah. inside and out. Um, I'd been designing for them for five years already, and yeah. they needed somebody to keep designing their educational catalogs. 
that went out at the time yeah. and print them. So isn't that interesting? They let you go as an as an employee and then hired you back yeah, as an in, yeah yes. it, well an independent contractor I guess Absolutely. really yeah. And they're still 13 years later. We're still doing work for them, which is so, so incredible. Which is great. Justifies though you opening up your own business and starting 100%. it. What were just what were some of your fears around opening up your own business? I'm just curious. Well, the first weekend my biggest fear was having to go out and buy all my own computer equipment and right? software because that's an investment. It is a huge investment, but it worked out. It worked out fine. I think my biggest fear was getting clients. Yeah. I mean, I knew I knew that I knew what I was doing. I can right. design. But I hadn't been in the sales industry before. Right, or, mar that, or, or, or marketing yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So it was going out there and, and having the wherewithal to know that I was strong in myself. Yeah, the confidence. A hundred percent, which I wasn't. Okay. So, you know, I spoke to a couple people and they said the first thing you need to do if you're going to build a business is get in a networking group. Right. So right. at the time I joined BNI, which was a networking group. Which is... Was that is that where we met? No, that was no, different. we yeah, we that met at Business one. Connections. Yeah, that's right, business but same connection. concept. Yeah, same yeah. concept. Group of people yeah. that meet every week, pass referrals. Mm -hmm. um, but I met some really fantastic people there. Yeah, um, and some mentors within business who had been in business for a long time who kind of guided me. Joined some mastermind groups. Love it. Um, joined VIA, the yeah. Valley Industry Association. Right, which now you're the chairwoman Which now of. I'm the chairwoman of. <laughs> <laughs> which is great, and but that's the point of it. You just yeah. slowly gain trust in your community and the yeah. people that you work with. And then word of mouth. I mean, 13 years later, I will say 98% of my business has been word of yeah. mouth referrals. You know what? I want to touch um, points on something because... The, fee the biggest fear that you said was like marketing yourself, having the confidence of yourself. And so getting out there and networking is part of that. Like that's mm -hmm. very hard to overcome if you have that natural fear, like the lack of confidence. It's very hard to overcome um, getting out there and networking and knowing what to say. So the fact that you did that, I'm, I'm extremely yeah. impressed by that yeah. of you. And I think that's great. And it's something that I would like for you guys to take note of because I talk a lot about networking and the importance of it, building those relationships. I have a client that has never advertised a single day in her life because of all the referrals she gets. Mm -hmm. It's enough to fit her budget and where she works, um, you know, like a, the, the model that she wants to work. So there's something to be said for that. So finding the courage sometimes is hard yeah. to do that. But you said you reached out to some friends and family and they kind of like gave you the, the tools in, in a really, way to Realistically, help you. the networking group was really where I think I gained a lot of my tools um, in That's business. Great. Um, I met Bill Miranda, who's yeah. now our mayor pro tem there. Right. I met um, Martin Rodriguez, who was who led me to VIA. Yeah. And just speaking with them about how to, I mean, I knew how to work with other people. I knew how to be, work Part on a, a team. team. Uh -huh. um, and I knew how to take direction. And But this was now taking me also out of the education realm, which right. I had been in for, my gosh, 15 years which of just your, designing stuff for yeah. the education field. Which is comfortable for you. It was, but mm -hmm. in some respect, it got boring after a while oh, because how many times can you recreate the same thing yeah. to market the same thing over and over again? Now owning my own firm, now I have such a breadth of, of clients. Yeah. I can be designing for Princess Cruises one day and Advanced Bionics the next yeah. day. So I'm totally different messages and different look and feel. Yeah. Um, and working with, now working with startups. Which yeah, which is, is so fun. a lot of fun. Which you've worked with me on quite a few of those. I feel mm -hmm. like every, uh, except for one of them, every client. So we, we would consider ourselves power partners, which I did another episode on. We talked about that as well. But I think... Um, these this power partner relationship that you and I have is crucial to just also the referral and getting getting yeah. business and growing each other's you know um, Rolodex if that's still a word I don't know but it's true and at some of the projects that we've worked on together of course Hillary did all of my brand everything that you see even regarding around the show which I love Thank you. here's what I love working about working with you is that I can tell her some ideas and you know, you guys know me, I talk all crazy and with my hands and everything. And I can go sit down in front of her and she just can create it really easily off of the things that we say. So you're very gifted in how you listen to clients. I think that's when people do ask what is one of your strengths yeah. or your greatest strength. I mean, I can design and designing is what I do, but listening yeah. to my clients is the biggest strength that I have. 
And, and sometimes there can be a disconnect when there's somebody in between. Yes. Um, and we've ha- I've had the issue before where I'm not working with the direct client. Well, we've had that working. Right. I brought Tom in like because I said, let's just let Tom sit there and he can tell you what fonts he likes and what fonts exactly. he doesn't like. Exactly. Like yeah. even with Roland Air, which yes. you brought in. Yes. So when that project started, there was a project manager in between myself and Lindsay, who is the person at Roland Air that we yeah. needed to. Yes. We ended up having to design three or four iterations of a site and it kept coming back as, no, that's not what we want. That's right. not where we're going with it. So I asked, I said, can I please sit down? Because I think yes. the way I hear things and the way my brain registers them mm-hmm. is different than what I get from somebody else. Yeah. So a five minute conversation on the phone with her and I was able to go back and 100% understand where they wanted to go and what they right. wanted to do. And it was it worked out and fine. It was, it was done. Perfect. Some of the projects we've worked on together, of course, is my brand I mentioned, Burbank Fitness Club, Burbank Center Apartments, Roland Air. Mm -hmm. We've worked together on a lot of nonprofits. Like you've come in as the senior center. Yeah, the senior center, the Wish Education Foundation. I mean, I can't tell you how happy I am. I know you. (laughs) But also, I feel like, you know, you're one of my trusted resources. So when people come to me and they need things, you know, I have a list of people, but you're my top go-to because I know that it's going to get done. Well, we're going to take a break and hear from our sponsors because without them, none of this would be possible. Um, Before I jump into that and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about um, brands' touch points and what a style guide is and those relations of each other. I want to talk to you guys about how pretty my hair looks today. I just have to throw this out. So um, Julie over at Perfect Day, Perfect Look takes care of me. Actually, like my hair, she's been doing it for years. I've known her for probably going on four years now. And everybody always compliments me on my color. She has mastered it. It's very difficult to be a redhead these days and and try to keep that red hair color throughout when you're trying to hide grays. grays and um, Julie definitely nails it. She is offering any of you guys, so if you just talk to Julie and ask for the Ask Amanda Show discount, she's offering a 20% off your first time visit with um, any service. And you can reach her at 661-645-2216. It's going to be in my show notes. But give Julie, if you want pretty hair, (laughs) give Julie a call at Perfect Day, Perfect Look. When we come back, we're going to be talking with um, Hillary about um, the, a style guide and um, the brand's touch points. We'll be right back. As business owners and professionals, you have so much on your plate. You never stop to think about your headshots, marketing video, or personal branding until you need it now. Then you're scrambling to figure out what to wear, how to match your brand, what to say, how to reach your target audience, and how to use your visuals in a way that actually makes an impact in your marketing. You quickly realize you don't have any of the answers because you're not supposed to. You're not a professional marketer, model, or TV personality. You're an executive who needs efficiency, superior quality, and a little direction. You also wanna feel good when you step in front of the camera and maybe even have a little bit of fun too. Hi, this is Brian and Lindsay Schlick with Schlick Art Photography and Video. We provide professional headshots marketing photography, business videos, video subscriptions, and more to help you market your business with compelling visuals and a streamlined experience. We guide you through the process every step of the way so you can feel your best on camera and make the biggest impact in your marketing. Visit schlickart.com to see how we can help you take your brand to the next level and look good while doing it. Welcome back, everyone, to the Ask Amanda Show. I'm sitting here with Hillary Bratwater of QM Design Group, one of my power partners, my go-to for all things graphic design, actually, Um, which actually you taught me I needed more than I actually thought I needed. So this is what I love about you. But we're going to jump into a style guide, um, little kind of defining what that is and the importance of it, and then our brand touch point. So explain to us what is a style guide, like what's in it? So a style guide can be anything from one page to 500 pages. It really depends on the breadth of the company and how much that company needs. Okay. The importance of it is to have consistency within your brand, within your marketing pieces, really. Um, so in there would be the logo, uh-huh. how it's used, the fonts that are being used in the logo. Um, we define what's called an X-height. 
So we define how much space when you're using that logo do you always need to leave around the logo okay. so that you're not impeding on it when you're designing with it. Um, the colors. Mm -hmm. So every color that's used in the logo are going to be used in any of your branding materials. We put the color in there and then we give it a breakout. So we're going to give it a CMYK breakout, which is for print. Okay. We're going to give it an RGB breakout, which is for screen. And we're going to give it a hex breakout, which is for web. Okay. So that no matter who you give that piece to, they will have all of that information. Okay. It's really the definitions of your brand and how so, it can be used. And like if they want to print t-shirts or Correct. like anything, marketing Okay. Mm -hmm. that, right. We can even assign it. a PMS color to it, which got is it. the closest Pantone color to your color. Okay. Um, so you can give that to let's and some brands, that's just the visual brand of it. Right. Some brands will now expand it out and they're going to go into the verbal brand of it. Yeah, like so they're going to give examples okay. of, of how your brand should hear or be listened to when somebody's writing for it. Okay. What are the words that should always be used yes. in your brand's writing? Yes. If they're writing a book or if they're writing a brochure about you, it should always be consistent. And that style guide is what keeps the consistency across the board for your brand, yeah. whoever's using it. Because okay. you could have a signage company working on your signage. Uh -huh. I mean, we designed the signage for Burbank Fitness, right? Yeah, let's right? use Burbank Fitness Club as an example. We I designed like... the signage for Burbank Fitness and then we hand it over to the signage company. Uh -huh. But sometimes some companies don't do that. Sometimes the companies go directly to the signage company and just hand them over their logo and say, can you design our signage for right. it? Right, right. With that, giving them the style guide, they can see exactly what the colors are, exactly what the fonts are. Um, yep, and make sure know, they're keeping. Um, yeah, like and that. if... God forbid you're somewhere and your designer is not available and you need something done and you reach out to another design firm because you're out of state or something yeah. and you need it right then and there, at least they can see, all right, yeah. we're using this font, they're using these colors and you can put something together quickly. Yeah. But also for your own team internally. Yep. You know, if you're doing like, you a know, memo. Like, yep, exactly. You know. Or like somebody that, like what I like to refer to is I, you know, have hired somebody to help me with our social media and making sure that all the the, the messaging that they use, it's, it's from that style guide as well. Or hire somebody that's like my marketing assistant that can yes. help me put together flyers um, just like last minute deals that were running or whatever, they would yeah. go to that style guide. Yeah, and you can, some companies are more lenient with it. Other companies, when I worked at Discovery, it was everybody from top to bottom. We lived and breathed by yeah. our style guide, even from memos that went out. And, and it yep. just lent to consistency so that you didn't have any crazy pieces that stood out from yeah. the rest. Because yeah. when you put all your pieces down on the table together, Yes your logo to your brochure, your business card to your website, everything should look like it goes together. Yeah, because it's the same family. The same family. Yeah. You know, and I'll give an instance. We had a lady at Discovery who <laughs> who constantly put stuff out on hot pink, like neon hot pink paper, right. which completely went against the grain of everything that we were. Yeah. And I said to her, I said, you can't keep doing that. Like, you can't do it. And she says, I have to. And I said, but it's so against the brand. You're going to get nailed. Eventually, somebody's going to come back and say yeah. something. And she said, well, you know, in a sea of white paper, my hot pink paper stands out. Which I think is clever. Kind of clever. I get it. But it was Internally. completely against yeah. everything that yeah. we had in place. And so as the design department, we were like, uh, Don't do this. <laughs> what yeah. do you do? You know, we had the same thing. You know, I've mentioned before that I worked at Hyatt. And we had the same thing at Hyatt. We actually had it. Every sales manager had that, had access to it on mm -hmm. a digital drive. And so when we were trying to create a flyer for um, a special that we were running for our market, we had to go to that and pull up templates were yeah. in there. Um, like you mentioned, memo templates are in there. Um, I mean, even email examples, but our signature on our email, that's all part yeah. of the style guide. I mean, they'll give even photography, there's a whole section on photography. So they're gonna give you examples yeah of what should our pictures look like. Yes. You know, Princess Cruises, there's 30 pages of photography dedicated to their style guide that are just examples of yes and no's. Right. This is what we want it to look like. This is not yeah. what we want it to look like. How, if, if you're a small business, like if you're just a small business, maybe you've got one to 10 employees, mm -hmm. let's say, how, how in depth and how important is that style guide to that size of a business? The important, that one, you can keep it really small. It can be a one page or style guide. Okay. Realistically, the importance of that one is gonna be your logo, uh -huh. how it's used, the fonts that are getting used, 
within okay. all your marketing pieces because uh -huh. there's the fonts that are in your logo. We may use a different font for the rest of your marketing materials. Got it. Okay. And we're going to break out literally every font. So if there's a bold one, an extra bold one, Got a heavy, it. a light, we're going to tell you exactly all of them that are being used in the marketing pieces. Okay. And then a break out of all the colors. Yeah. You that know, right there sets you up for success because you at least have a visual consistency with all your stuff. Yeah. I think that the, that's so important to have for a couple reasons because it does keep you on point. But, you know, companies have turnover. Mm -hmm. And when you've got turnover, you've got new employees that come in that think they're going to handle this. And it's like instead of trying to teach them all or sending them the logo or sharing with them all the fonts, you just send them this one right. document. You can I, send I just, them that yeah. one document with all of the elements that they yep. need. So. The fonts are already on your system. You already have, now you have the logo. Here's how you can use it. And from there, they have direction. Yeah. I feel like that, I wanted to share that part it, because I know a lot of my audience kind of fits that demographic. But I also think, how does one go about doing this? Can they make this on their own? Or is this something that they should reach out to their um, graphic designer for or a graphic designer to help them put together? Yeah. I mean, if they've designed their own logo, then they're going to know already what yeah. their font is that they used. Um, yeah. When I talk about consistency, when we talk about a brand and staying consistent, the hardest part for people to understand is that when you create this look and feel, this visual brand for your company, so you have your logo and now you've designed this beautiful flyer, keep it, don't get bored of it, right? Yeah. Because that's what's consistent across the board. Everything should always be in the same font and right. everything should you don't change the second flyer to something completely different. Right. Because now you're causing inconsistency in the look and feel of your brand. And they're not going to recognize it when they right. see it pop up or it comes across their right. desk as and it's affiliated to you. So the font that yeah. we use in somebody's flyer is the same font that we're using on a billboard. Yeah. Right? Uh, yes. So that there's, and the colors are on the pulling across. On any of it. On anything that yeah. we do. Sometimes it calls for adding an additional font, something fun and decorative. Mm -hmm. um, if we want to do a big call out in a, a title or something. Yeah, yeah. If we're designing a magazine, of course, we're going to be adding additional fonts to yeah. give things more flourish. But always, and keep it simple. You really, mm -hmm. we have so many clients, we literally use one font across the board. You just we use, use the different, different weights yep, and different sizes, trick. but yeah. we don't use 12 different fonts. But I think the average Joe or the average Joanne, whatever, trying to be politically correct here, but like we don't think like that. So we right. just think of like, okay, that's our font for our logo. What other fonts could we use? I, I never would really think to like just use that same font in different ways. Right. Um, use it in small well, all caps. I mean, like, Burbank Fitness, we yeah. use two fonts, Yep. right? We have the font that we use for Burbank Fitness, uh -huh. but then we have... Another Fitness font uh -huh. underneath it, and that's a little bit more simple, clean line. Yeah, that's the font that we use in all in, all in of everything. Our yeah, which is crucial. so it's clean and yeah. it's not going crazy. Well, talk to me about brand touch points. Let's share with the viewers like what that actually means as well, because I think that's another aspect of getting to know your right. style guide. So it. the brand touch points are when any point in time that your customer comes in touch with your brand. It can be visiting your website. It can be through social media. It could be through a flyer that they picked up. Yep. Um, and it's important that, again, is back to that consistency of the brand promise and, mm -hmm. and is what they're coming into contact with all these different times consistent. Yeah. Right? It could be down to how does the person at the front desk answer the phone? Right. Right. right? When you walk into that business, does that business communicate the brand yeah. is everybody in the business wearing a shirt with the logo on it, like at the gym, yeah, at right? The gym, yeah. Um, does does the email that goes out to somebody is it branded correctly? Right, right. right? Even the font, like we were just talking about mm -hmm. the font. Does the email match the website? Does it yeah. match the person? Even the personalities. If you're if you've already said that your you know your brand is going to promise happy, energetic, outgoing, mm -hmm. um, clean, fresh look. When you walk into that location or you like get that? on the phone with somebody, <laughs> is that what it feels like? Yeah. Those are yeah. those touch points. Okay. It could even be from the, you know, when the person receives the invoice. Yes. You know, is it, does it match? Does it look? Yeah. Was it? It's, col right? it's, it's in line with culture, I would mm -hmm. say, at the same time. So it's the digital version of that, of Absolutely. what your culture is that exists in the company itself. And it's making sure that everybody that is part of your company, part yeah. of your brand is on board with it. Yeah. Like 
with your mission statement? Do they fall in line with your mission statement? Right. Well, let's talk more about that when we come back um, because I do have some questions for you around that that I think would help all the viewers. And before we hear from our sponsors, I have one more little shout out I want to give to one of our favorite stores I know that we spend a lot of time at, <laughs> which is Barn and Charm. They're located on Lyons Avenue. Everybody knows the little yellow Victorian building on Lyons Avenue. Carol, who owns Barn and Charm, has a pure passion for finding vendors to support that have a lot of handmade gifts there, antiques that are very unique. I mean, every time I need a go-to I mean, I need a gift, mm -hmm. like a special, unique gift. That's my go-to place is I just show up there and I, everybody is so happy when they receive something from me from there. But right now, if you mentioned the Ask Amanda show, Carol is giving you guys 10% off your first time purchase. So it's a great time to get out and go shop and find something new to do. They also have a lot of workshops too. So check out Barn and Charm. Their information will be in our show notes and on the screen. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about consistency of our brand. And actually, I want you to tell everybody all the services that you do because I think sure. that's in alignment with keeping your brand consistent. So we'll be right back with Hillary um, with QM Design from the Ask Amanda Show. If you're a business owner or entrepreneur, then you know how to hustle. You show up every day, you put in the work, and you dedicate yourself day in and day out to making that amazing dream come true. But building a brand doesn't always go as planned. Sometimes it feels like no matter how hard you try, you just can't get past a certain block, fix a specific problem, or take that next step on a daunting project. How do you get yourself from where you are to where you wanna be? That's when you ask Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda Benson Tilch of Ask Amanda, a boutique consulting firm driven by passion and good ideas. I help solve everyday problems for the small business owner from customer service to marketing to goal setting. I've never met a client I wasn't able to help because if I can't solve your problem myself, I'll connect you to the person who can. Are you ready to finally break through your toughest problems? Visit askamandaconsulting.com to see how I can help. Because if you ask me, you'll get a solution. Hi, welcome back to the Ask Amanda Show. I'm sitting here with Hillary Bratwater of QM Design, um, obviously my go-to person for everything that I need graphic design related, but also, which we were gonna talk about, all everything I needed printed or ordered or mailed or bleh, all the things. All so why don't you let people know, because I think the benefit of working with you, and I don't know if all designers or graphic designers are this way, but that I can just, hey, I need a rack card, hey, I need a t-shirt, I need a hat design, but then you actually do it all. So tell us a little bit more about like your full service. Yeah, so we are, we are turnkey, um, concept to completion. So you can come in starting a business and we will sit down with you, we will design your logo, move that into your identity system with your letterhead, your envelopes, your business cards, um, brochures, print it all for you, have it delivered to you. Um, if you need to have direct mail done, postcards put in the mail, we're going to design your postcards for you. We can work with a copywriter unless you want to yeah. write your own copy um, and design those cards, purchase the mail list from you for you or get your mail list from you mm -hmm. if you have it and put it in the mail. You don't ever have to touch it. Um, you'll just receive it in the mail when you see what it is. Which is remarkable, actually. Yeah. yeah, and then we can do everything else that is needed for branding for a company. So if you need to have t-shirts made, we'll get t-shirts made. Folders. Folders, yeah. um, trifle brochures, big brochures to coffee table books. I mean, we've we've been brought in. And Name tags. Anything. Yeah. Anything you can think of down to pens and little stuff to big projects. We've done full yeah. installations of light box wall panels yes um for yes. for big companies like honda and down mm -hmm. to you know small little pieces that Signage. you give that out at a trade show and trade show booths yes those are big there's trade show seasons yeah, so that's we right. can do the canopies we and can the... do canopies we can do huge 20 foot displays yep. whatever it is designing something for at eight and a half by 11 is the same thing as designing something huge. I mean, yeah. we do billboards for our clients and work with the billboard companies to get those done and installed and contracts created for them. Oh my them. God, I want to order a bunch of so. things from you right now. <laughs> like you just got me all excited about thinking about that stuff. It's so fun to create that with you. It is. But that's one thing that I think a lot of people don't, 
look for or know or understand when they're when they're searching for a graphic designer is to actually look for a full service graphic designer because of what Hillary just said like the benefits of working with somebody like you is that I can once you've designed my logo and things I can then go to you and say hey I need t-shirts right we need hey I need banners uh-huh I need a new banner for our special I need a yeah I need an ad for the magazine for a postcard I need the signage for inside the gym you know the rules and regulations for the locker room like so really looking for a full service graphic designer, that's the benefit. And I didn't think a lot of people knew that. Yeah. A but lot then, of designers aren't full service. A lot right. of designers are strictly designers. Designers. Yeah. Um, and they don't offer that. But I felt I had enough of the background of working with vendors and I had vendors all across the United States that I worked with that that was something that I could easily offer my clients. Yeah. And it helps me keep control of the project just gonna and keep that. control of the brand and the look and the feel. The consistency. Because when you print something, if it doesn't print correctly mm -hmm. or the color doesn't come out right, then you're off brand. Yep. Or it's mm -hmm. grainy. Or it's grainy. Right. Or they cut it version. incorrectly. Uh -huh. um, and, and we've run into that. We had a client that we designed for. But she had somebody that was in her networking group who was a printer, and she said, I really want to give him the print work. I said, okay, not a problem. And they asked for the files, and I said, in 20-plus years that I've been designing, I've never been asked for a file like that. Yeah. So I said, caveat, I will give you the files how you want them, but know that I have no control over what it's going to look like when it's printed because I yeah. don't print with that kind of file. And it didn't come out right. No. It came out completely, it was supposed to be blue and it came out but purple. But you warned them. <laughs> but I pre-warned them. But I know yeah. my, I know the printers that I work with personally. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a big job, I'm going to go on press with it. Yeah. And I'm going to be there. I mean, we printed a beautiful book for Princess Cruises that I was on press for 36 right. hours. Oh my gosh. Um, slept on a couch, got woken up to go out and check it as it was coming off the presses. Yeah. So we'll do what we need to do to yeah. make sure that it gets done and gets done correctly. I think that's um, awesome. But it's... Well, let's talk a little bit more about consistency too, because mm -hmm. keeping all that in consistency, and I, I would like for you to share the story that you've shared with me before about Tide. Because <laughs> this just makes such good it sense. It makes right? a lot of sense. And so it was uh, actually came up when I was in school, you okay. know, and they talk about the brand and brand consistency. And really, a brand is a promise, right? It's the promise of what you're going to receive from that company, from that product. So the, the concept was when you were growing up, your mom washed all your clothes and tied. Mm -hmm. Your clothes were always clinging. You got a promise that when you took your clothes out, unless you spilled something that was going to stain, right. your clothes would smell fresh and clean. But then you move out to go to college or you move out on your own mm -hmm. and it's your first time going shopping. What are you going to buy? Tide. You're going to buy Tide yeah. because you it's know familiar. that that brand mm -hmm. is going to make sure that your clothes are clean yeah. and they're going to smell fresh. and you keep doing it because so Tide has kept the promise the along uh -huh. the way of yeah. what they've said their product will do. And I love that because I have not really ever thought of, and I talk a lot about brand, I've never thought of brand as a promise. And so like, what is that promise that you're gonna keep? I've always talked about what's the why of your brand, mm -hmm. and that's gonna help you develop your brand's voice. But then, the, then once you do that, the promise that you're gonna deliver on that, I think that was just a great little nugget of inf inspiration to kind of keep with us a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about a marketing campaign because this is another key aspect where a graphic designer can come in and really play a, yeah. a, an important role in building out a marketing campaign. Explain to us kind of what that means for a, 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 small, comp a small business. So you can, we've talked a lot about consistency. Mm -hmm. And if you come and sit down with us, we're going to look at where your brand is and what we can do in regards to a marketing campaign. But everything needs to work together in that campaign. So if we create a brochure and a direct mail piece and an advertising in a magazine uh -huh. and then social media, that whole campaign that we run, maybe we're going to run it six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. We may drop that postcard four to six times in the mail over that six to eight weeks is building brand recognition awareness, yeah. and awareness of yeah. it. And people, when they start to see it over and over again yep. in multiple different places, mm -hmm. are going to start to recognize it. I think that's what's important about a marketing campaign that I think a lot of um, listeners or viewers might get confused, mm -hmm. is that a campaign means over multiple platforms. So right. the mailer to an ad of some court, whether it's a billboard or in a magazine to a social media ad, which is different to right. maybe the, the pop-up that's on your website. Exactly, and the thing is, is is that this campaign 
you know, what you're doing when you're marketing your company and you're marketing or you're marketing a product is we're really trying to provoke a question. Right. Do I need that? Yeah. Right. What problem are you what, solving? For exactly. Me? Yeah. So do I need Burbank Fitness Center? Right. Why do I need it? Yes, I need it. So now I've seen this piece of multiple times. I've seen the social media pop up in my feed. I haven't done anything about it, right. but now it's starting to resonate with me yeah. and I need that. Now I'm going to go to the website because that's where I can get more information. It needs to look the and same And you there. better make sure that when they yeah. land on your website that it looks yep. just like all of that marketing that you've been putting out there. Yeah. If you've been putting out stuff that's hot pink and they get there and it's green, <laughs> yeah. there might be a They're disconnect. They're not delivering on that. I, right. I appreciate that so much. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify what a marketing campaign is and how somebody like you could help with that, Absolutely. keeping that consistent. Well, when we come back, we are going to let the viewers know how to find you and connect with you. And then we're going to do a fun thing that we've been doing called Flip the Script, where Hillary gets to ask yeah. Amanda a couple of questions. So we'll be right back. Marketing isn't just about designing the right ad or creating the right slogan. It's about finding the right audience to engage with your ad. Capturing the attention of the right person is all it takes to make a client for life in today's digital world. Easier said than done, right? Well, what if you knew where your audience was already spending their time? Schlickart Video Podcast provide a platform for local influencers to share their voices with key communities here in Santa Clarita. That means audience members know, like, and trust the recommendations of their hosts. That's why sponsoring a Schlickart Video Podcast is a great solution for your business. You get the benefit of a built-in audience and, most importantly, you walk away with a fully produced video commercial for your business that you can use however you like. Are you ready to reach your audience where they want to be found? Call Lindsay at Schlickart at 661-313-3907 to inquire about becoming a sponsor for your favorite Schlickart video podcast, because it's time to join the conversation. Welcome back to the Ask Amanda Show. I'm sitting here with my lovely guest who has dropped a ton of value. If you guys are just now tuning in, just rewind because you're going to want to hear all that stuff that she just said. And you might want to take some notes and also maybe bring somebody in to watch it that's on your marketing team. That's how valuable I thought it was. So Hillary with QM Design, tell everybody where they can connect with you. So our offices are here in Santa Clarita. You can reach us at 661-250-9914 or you can visit our website at Q like in Queen or Quinn, <laughs> M like in Mary, designgroup.com. And do you have any special gift for our viewers or listeners today? We do. If they want to reach out to us, we would be happy to sit down and do a full brand evaluation, look at all of their marketing materials, find out where the inconsistencies are and help them put that back together so that nice. it's consistent. I love that um, you already know there's going to be some inconsistencies <laughs> <laughs> because there probably is. We were just talking you know, off camera that we've all had those. And so that that's a really nice gift. Thank you for offering that. Um, now let's have some fun. Flip the script. This is where Hillary gets to ask Amanda. This is the Ask Amanda show. Some questions and we'll Put see where it goes. Seat, yeah, right? I'm in the hot seat. Okay. So my first question, how important do you think it is to stay in line with your company's mission, vision, and value? I think that's a great question. We actually didn't talk too much about that, but that is part of your brand mm -hmm. as well. Um, it's very important to stay in line with it. So creating your mission statement, if you will, um, is different than your vision um, for your company. But I believe in having your mission statement up somewhere in your break room or somewhere where your employees are kind of mm -hmm. gather frequently. Um, I also remember being a part of um, Hyatt and at any of our sales meetings, we would have to go around and um, say what our vision statement was, or a mission statement was, like you had to have it memorized right. because they really wanted you to be on brand at all point, at all, at all times. So I think it's crucial to keeping that, I don't know, like fresh top of mind. And a lot of people don't create one. True. Right? We have our clients create one when they sit down with us if they're creating a new brand. I think that's awesome. I think that that is crucial. Um, yeah, I think it's it's super important. It's, it's part of the who you are. It's part of your why. You have to reflect back on it yes. too and make sure that you're staying on point and yes. in the right direction. And you might need to change it every now and then because your brand does evolve over Absolutely. time. And so, so should your, your mission statement. All right. When you're working with a company on the importance of brand consistency, what is the number one touch point that you start them with? 
I always start with people with what's your why because I feel like once everybody can really dial down what their purpose is for their business, mm -hmm. it will carry through in their brand. It will be part of their logo. It will be part of their tagline. It'll then become part of their mission statement. It'll become part of their vision of where they want to go with like their mm -hmm. goals. So I'm a huge fan of like what's your why. I, I think that would be the number one touch point. And I know that sounds weird because it's like we're – what do you touch with that? But it becomes everything else. Everything that you touch. Yeah, it is. It's all the things. So Awesome. Okay, next one is, what do you find the hardest part about managing a major brand? Well, so you know I manage a few of them. <laughs> um, and she's referring to, because she has helped me, so we've, we've referenced it quite a bit here, but Burbank Fitness Club is a a big brand that I run in Burbank and um, it's a large gym. I think that my biggest challenge with that is, um, or was, it's changed. So my biggest challenge in the beginning was just getting brand recognition. So so getting the brand out there, how can we do it? We gave everything away for free. We gave mm -hmm. free, t we still do actually, t-shirts and hats and squishy things and water bottles. We put our logo on everything, bags that we could think of and we just gave it away to the community. Mm -hmm. That was a little challenging because my team wanted to like, why aren't we charging for this stuff? It's like, hold on, I just need to build the brand first. Yeah. Um, now my biggest challenge is just around culture. So, so again, kind of delivering on the promise of what we are, we are a community-based gym. Mm -hmm. That's what our main focus is. Um, we wouldn't be where we are or who we are without the community and the support of the community. So we everything that we do, we keep the community-based like focus. And I have to remind my team sometimes that no, 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 we have to do this route first because of the community. This is where it, where it goes. So I think that's my, been my biggest challenge is just the culture, keeping, keeping the team in line. Okay. Yeah. And then my next question. Yes. So you took part in a fundraiser this year. Yes, I did. A combination or a partnership with the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, yeah. And Schlickart. Yes. To do <laughs> photos of... Things that took place during COVID. During quarantine. So 12 yes. weeks of quarantine was what it was called. Yes. <laughs> so my question to you, because I've seen your phenomenal photo, <laughs> what were you wearing under the cork? Under the cork. So for the, I'm sure we'll show the photo here, but for those of you who don't know, so I couldn't figure out how do I, this is a good question, how do I demonstrate or show in a photo what I've been doing during quarantine? And I've been de-stressing by taking a lot of tubs. I have a nice big bathtub and uh, drinking a lot of wine. And I sort of do that, you know, in or out of quarantine. I don't really know, so that's just my thing. So I have a, a, a accumulated a lot of wine corks. So I'm in a tub with a bunch of wine corks. And what was I wearing <laughs> underneath it? I had a nude strapless bra on and nude booty shorts on underneath that was what I was wearing. Phenomenal. We did make um, Brian, the photographer, leave the room. So Brian Schlick shot it. We made him leave the room while I got in it. But I didn't care, it's like a bathing suit, whatever. But that's what I was wearing under the corks. Good question. Well, Hillary, thank you for being here today. Thank you have you. been such a delight to be here, but you've helped educate, our, I think, our viewers so much on so much about brand consistency and um, style guide and touch points that I hope that you guys really got a lot to take away from that. Right. Please take advantage of her gift to everybody. I think that that's crucial to help um, with your messaging. So thank you for watching the Ask Amanda Show. We'll see you next time. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. Do you have a topic you'd love to hear about? Or is there something you want to ask Amanda? Make sure to comment below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel so you get a notification whenever we post new videos.